Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar topic, how to enable intelligent warehouse management with SAP RFID and barcode enablement. Uh, my name is Pat Ouellette. I'm with Crave Infotech. Uh, I run sales uh, for the US based out of the frozen tundra, commonly called uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I uh, haven't spent the last 20 years in the SAP space working for both SAP um, and as part of the partner ecosystem. Before we get started, uh, just some quick housekeeping uh, to ensure that you can interact with myself and the speakers. First, uh, if you have a question, uh, we have the Q&A and chat enabled on the bottom of your screen. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we will also be launching a poll in today's webinar uh, that we invite you to participate in by selecting your responses uh, when the poll appears on your screen. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, at the conclusion of the webinar to answer any of your questions that you uh, had during the, uh, during the presentation. Uh, now, um, I would like to welcome Shrikant Nastain and Milan Chowdhury. Uh, just uh, real brief, um, Shrikant, he's a digital transformation enthusiast, experienced in SAP Digital Core, Intelligent Warehouse Management, Enterprise Asset Management, Enterprise Mobility and Cloud Platform. He has 27 plus years of industry experience assisting organizations with technological challenges for multiple lines of business. Uh, we also have Milan, Millen, sorry, uh, who is a functional technocrat with 28 plus years of experience. Uh, 18 years of those spent in core SAP ECC and S4 HANA, including modules like P2P, WMS, CWM delivery, uh, well, experience in delivery and project management, uh, as well as a solution architect. Ooh. Uh, he has also served for 10 years in the pharmaceutical and bulk uh, drug industry as an analytical chemist and scientist. So just brings a wealth of knowledge. Um, he's also FDA approved certified, along with other certifications training from both SAP and partners um, with WMS, CWM, PMP training, 35 PDUs. Now, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Shikant to start the presentation. Shikant. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. I appreciate your kind words. So uh, welcome everybody. And uh, we're going to spend next 20, 30 minutes talking about how we can make our warehouse intelligent using SAP, RFID, uh, mobile computing, and some other technologies uh, we are working on. <clears throat> so uh, the introduction is, uh, thank you for Patrick again for introducing us. Uh, this is a quick overview of the agenda, why intelligent warehouse management, how to determine where your organization is on the warehouse maturity curve, how SAP tools can empower customers to advance the maturity curve, how to enable warehouse with barcoding and RFID, how RF enabled mobile applications increase ROI up to 50%, and then next generation warehousing through forklift integration, indoor mapping, and geofencing. Very exciting topics. Uh, there will be a mix of for presentation, discussions, and also demo. Not that this whole uh, uh, webinar is scheduled exactly the way the, uh, the agenda is, but you, we, our goal is to cover these points uh, at different during the next 30 minutes. A little bit about Crave Infotech. Uh, we are a 14 year old company. This is our journey, right? So we started in 2007. We partnered with SAP in 2008. Uh, most of the principals in this organization, senior members worked in SAP way uh, more than the life of the organization. We became uh, SAP global uh, partner. Uh, we became uh, Pinnacle Award finalist, which SAP gives every year to 44 odd selected partners. Uh, we launched our applications, so pre-packaged application for maintenance, calibration, warehouse, and in the supply chain area. We became premium partner for Zebra, ISV, and reseller. We won the AS Award in 18, and now uh, we have, uh, we are in 2022, of course, and uh, um, we are moving ahead with 
very specific areas of our expertise and focus. This is our growth path and our goal. We want to be um, <clears throat> to expand our focus in BTP, EAM, EWM, and supply chain and establish ourselves as the RFID and location services technology provider. That's our goal in this year, uh, expand and establish. Uh, currently, we are around 150 people team. We want to, uh, we have pipeline and the growth plan to go to 300, pretty aggressive. And uh, by 2024, we would like to be the global leader in RFID and location services. And by 25, uh, our goal is to become a thousand people company with focus on EAM, uh, intelligent warehouse and supply chain automation. So that's our uh, future plans. Uh, a little bit about our, uh, so 50 plus years, 50 plus pre-packaged products, uh, 50 plus large enterprise, that means we work with across uh, we have 50 plus customers, large, mid-size. We have some small customers also, SMB organization. And uh, as I mentioned, 150. The partnership, SAP, Zebra, Here Map, Amazon Web Service, and Google, this is our partnerships. The certifications include, uh, of course, ISO 9001, ISO 27001 for security. Uh, we are a minority or diverse organization. So it's uh, NMSDC, woman-owned, uh, New York business and uh, supplier clearing house. Uh, I mentioned some of the awards earlier. Uh, so that's kind of a synopsis of us. What's our focus area? Intelligent asset management. So that's plant maintenance, work management, service management, all that stuff, uh, which includes standard SAP. Um, so our goal is to take organizations from reactive to predictive maintenance and lay out that journey for them. Then the intelligent warehouse, that's the focus for today, right? And then supply chain automation, uh, business technology platforms, so BTP, the SAP is new technology, and basically keeping your S4 clean. Intelligent enterprise, so S4, UI, UX, business one, and we do implementation and support. So let's get more focus into, uh, so these are some of the commonly known challenges. I don't have to exp explain them. We all know that, right? The redundant procedures, uh, consuming labor task, labor time, inaccuracy and in inefficiency in handling inventory, difficult to manage stocking and picking orders with diverse product portfolio. I'm sure uh, you guys have one or the multiple and depends upon uh, your, your product mix, your location, your, um, your maturity curve. And we'll talk about that more where you are on the maturity curve and high labor costs, right? And we have more challenges now because of COVID and the pandemic situation, uh, handling uh, resources in such a difficult time. Let's get into a deep dive into the SAP barcoding RFID and warehouse management. So here, um, this is, uh, we call maturity, warehouse maturity model. And there are five quadrants to this, five phases. Uh, the first phase is, of course, gain basic control of basic operations. So barcode, QR code enablement, uh, wearable and wise, so optimize use and mobility sensors. So that's targeted use, real-time sensitivity, locationing, widespread use of real-time and visibility. And finally, predictive and adaptive operations. Uh, we know that most of the organization falls in first and second phase. Companies are... There are very few in third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, so our goal is to find out, work with you, find out where we are. And this is a complimentary service. We work with you. We do a quick assessment. Uh, and then um, you can decide if you want to move forward. No strings attached. But in this phase, we basically identify where we are and how we can help. And that I will illustrate in the next slide. This slide basically talks about so on the left-hand side, uh, I got some animation missing here. So the right-hand side text should not be popping up now, but uh, uh, let's focus on the left-hand side. Um, this is where we work with you and find out is what you are intending to uh, automate or get it to the intelligence level, whether it's a production warehouse, distribution warehouse, transit cross-docking warehouse, storage and operation, 
and which processes, it's inbound, outbound, cycle counting, internal transfer, printing. Once we determine that, then we'll find out uh, what is the best solution. Now you might have already SAP uh, and that's great. Uh, whether you might have ECC on WM or just an ECC on, uh, with IM, uh, we have customers we are working who have got only IM and they haven't moved to WM. Uh, you might have S for HANA on-prem with WM and embedded EW or embedded AWM, or you might have S for on cloud with embedded EWM. Any of these solutions, we work with customers. We can help you implementing this, or we can help you extending them both. Now, once you have the uh, ERP in place, and you have warehouse management solution in place, now the next thing is, is to find out, this is really messed up, yeah, okay. So uh, the next thing is to find out what barcode enablement you need to do, whether it's a RFID or, sorry, or a QR code, if you are more uh, next step, because we have customers who have done uh, QR code, but then now want to track real-time tracking or more close to real-time tracking of their assets and also their parts, which are critical for the business or very high value with RFID, and we can help with that too. In addition to that, we have customers, they want to do forklift integration, automate the forklift operation. And we have those scenarios too. So that's, so first the ERP, then barcode enablement, RFID enablement, forklift integration. Um, that's the next step. And once you do that, uh, then basically I'm gonna now illustrate through this. Uh, we have customers who want to go for voice activated picking. We have customers who want to go for hands-free picking. These days, voice activities, a little bit, uh, people are cautious, uh, especially with the smart glasses and the voice activated, just from reusability perspective, right? Because of the COVID, we don't want people to using the same stuff. It's very difficult to clean, but wearable devices, hands-free picking is being, uh, still being implemented widely. So those are your finger scanners, scanners and the wearable mobile devices. Right now, there are devices available which are on, um, on uh, palm. Uh, so uh, instead of using your finger scanners, you can use the palm or the hand scanner so that you still have, you can utilize your fingers better. If I have pictures, I'll, I'll be happy to share a little bit later. So first is the ERP, barcode, QR code, RFID, forklift integration, hands-free picking, voice activated picking. Not only that, we also help organization to do the uh, site survey. Now, why site survey is so important? Uh, we are working with a very large uh, organization, manufacturing company, 19 countries, 39 locations. And they came to us with a problem saying, um, guys, our mobile application doesn't work. And then they said the hardware is not good. So we were sure that it's not a hardware issue. So we started working with them and we said, let's do a site survey. And to our surprise, this organization, they themselves manufacture Wi-Fi API. So they have plenty of APIs, right? So Wi-Fi sh should not be a problem. So the, we did a Wi-Fi assessment and we found out they put too many APIs, too many wi wireless networks in the same region. What happened is when the wireless networks were overlapping, when you go into that overlapping zone of the wireless network, mobile application doesn't know who to talk to, which one is best, and they used to lose connectivity. So it was not an application issue, it was not a uh, mobile device issue, it was the issue of too much Wi-Fi, too many Wi-Fi networks. And we were able to help them and save a lot of hard burn problems and also the employee satisfaction. So that's where the site survey comes into picture. Now, once you have that in place, then we start talking about you need a mobile application for all these places. So we have specialized service whereby we identify which mobile device is good for you. That depends upon your process, location, or um, the, the type and size of your warehouse, how they are stocked. And finally, the uh, type of material you handle. So if it is a small part, uh, maybe the smaller devices or hands-free picking is good, but if it is a large, you are using forklift, of course, tablet, mounted tablets with external 
um, scanner might be a better idea. And that's what we work with you and help you to find out what's the best hardware. Uh, we have seen customers who have got multiple sites and one hardware doesn't fit in. So there will be a combination of probably typically two. So one is a large screen and one is a smaller screen so that they can pick the right one. Uh, we also do packaging, imaging, and creating everything. So when it comes out, uh, so this this organization we uh, I was talking about, uh, they come to us with a Wi-Fi dropping problem. We end up doing a complete project for them, bringing all of their hardware from Windows to Android, and and it was end to end. That means when their people open the devices globally in each location, they had to power it up and log in and it will work. So everything, including their Wi-Fi network settings, their location setting, everything was already uh, incorporated in the program. So we, we go to that level working with uh, Zebra and other partners. So that's the end-to-end -end solution. This is one of the glimpse of one of our application, how they typically look like um, for complete warehouse automation. And there are several samples. This is another success story for a leading pharma multinational infrastructure provider. Uh, this is what I was talking about, 29, 39 locations, uh, 19 countries, uh, and we were able to help them with end-to-end. -end. The next one is success story for a pharma and life sciences company where we did a spare part. Uh, this was a relatively complex, 20,000 parts per warehouse. Uh, very small parts, difficult to track them, but we were able to help them using barcode, QR code, a combination of RFID too. Now let's talk about what are the trends currently and the drivers in warehousing. So omni-channel, near-shoring, cross-docking, item visibility, real-time location, and the automation. I mean, this is what is we are all looking for from the efficiency perspective. Then uh, get my banner below. Um, warehouse operations must keep pace by solving today's. What are the challenges? Isolated systems, external internal visibility gap, labor shortage, disconnected workers and workflows, bottlenecks and asset inventory, blind spot, rising workflow. I think some of this we have discussed before. And finally, errors and non-compliance. Now, what are the current trends in warehouse? So customers' expectations outside the warehouse demand more. So pressure is increased outside the warehouse to process more. Of course, everything is driven by customer, right? Uh, there are only two things drive these days. One is the stock market and another is customer. So here in this case, of course, the customer is driving. Order volume is at all time high. Um, days have turned into hours and picking accuracy is white. As you know, um, it's no longer, um, we have Amazon and all the large retail organizations, they are guaranteeing two hour delivery. So the, the picking and the accuracy, picking accuracy and delivery is always a pressure. Omni-channel transaction, increasing SKUs, right? Everybody needs different variant, more SKUs uh, to meet specific customer needs as uh, they are required. What are the trends? So tracking, visibility, accurate inventory, profitable omni-channel. Creating a profitable omni-channel operation is critical. Accurate inventory is vital. Uh, instant access and availability tracking. So, and this is where we are going to go very uh, soon, is our customers are demanding uh, to understand not only the quicker delivery, quicker picking accuracy, but also where are you at this stage? Uh, so we are working with several customers where uh, customers are looking for um, track traceability and the tracking during the whole supply chain process but also they are looking for doing even manufacturing and assembly. They want to know where their product is at this stage, what stage it is being uh, currently so that they can understand and plan better. Now, this is where the data capture plays a key and a vital role in all of this process to get us to a level where we can provide the accuracy of the picking, 
uh, faster uh, picking and shipping and also tracking to the customer. So ultimately it boils down to better information, better decisions and better outcome. So what are the uh, different data capture goals? Fit to application, lowest total cost of ownership, and of course, best in class. Of course, we all know that the, the cheap and quality doesn't go hand in hand, but we all are striving for the lowest uh, total cost of ownership with best in class. So uh, from the fit to application is, uh, from the application perspective, there are 1D, 2D, Digimark and RFID, these are the different uh, solution available for reading. Many form factors, right? We have a handheld, we have half uh, uh, form factor, and we have fixed. So there are different types of um, uh, scanning devices available or reading devices available into the marketplace, corded or cordless, uh, tiered portfolio tailored to application use cases. And then total cost of ownership and of course the best in class. So when I say best in class, you want to look at hardware, which is the highest resolution and image quality, most advanced digital optic designs and uh, unmatched working range, and custom ASI as the barcode or RFID. You should be able to use for both of them as much as possible. So this is a little bit about what is available from Zebra uh, we work very closely with Zebra. Of course, we are their premier partner, but our applications work on all the platforms because they are designed for cross-platform and cross-form um, factors. So our applications works with Android, iOS, uh, and, and latest Windows, but they also work on tablet, mobile, and also laptops. But from the uh, ruggedized perspective, we work very closely with Zebra. All of our applications are validated by Zebra. That means they are tested for memory leak. They are tested for uh, user interface. They are tested for uh, integration with SAP. Um, they are tested for uh, battery usage because you don't want to have application which is going to be a drain because this battery needs to last at least one shift, right? at least for eight to 10 hours and then you can swap them more the better um, so that all testing is done not only that every application has to work so well that they utilize the local apis very effectively the zebra api so it should be able to read the camera it should be able to read the um, keyboards uh, the gps and uh, all of that stuff needs to happen very smoothly and that's all already built in so a smarter, faster, better scanning solution uh, supported by data capture DNA. And that's what I was talking about right now. That's the DNA part, data capture. Now, this is, this, this, this is a very good uh, uh, image. If you see on the uh, green circle, that is RFID uh, and vision devices. So those are basically RFID readers and uh, aggregators. On the blue circle, um, dark blue, that's attended barcode and RFID. So that's basically handheld RFID readers. If you see here, this is typically, um, you see the mobile application, mobile devices, but there is a small um, extension on at the top of the application, so the device, which is basically RFID reader. And then data analytics, all of that is available as a package. So mobile RFID, uh, RFID scanner, and then we have uh, the RFID and the vision. So the image reader and also the RFID, um, they call RFID hub, uh, where we collect the information from the RFID readers. Now there are two cases I'm gonna talk about today. One is the warehouse, and another is the manufacturing or the assembly line. So warehouse, uh, how does the RFID play, right? So there are many types of RFID. There's the active RFID, passive RFID. I'm sure you guys have heard about that. And uh, uh, they play, there they are very specific use cases. Of course, the passive RFID is expensive uh, to, uh, expensive to install, expensive to 
manage. The readers are also expensive. You need uh, a, a slightly different uh, setup to read active RFID, but that gives you tremendous amount of accuracy. For example, you want to find out where is this particular asset or parties or this shipment is. If you have active RFID and you have all the beacons and the network set up in your warehouse, you should be able to see it since which corner. But that's very expensive, right? Uh, the next is the passive RFID. So the passive RFIDs are RFIDs, they are, in, they are attached to an object, but they can also read, but you will have to go there. Right? For example, you walk into the warehouse and your device will start beeping, beep, 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 and the beep will go uh, quicker and louder as you go closer to those devices. So it's basically gives you a similar experience, a similar capability with lower total cost. Uh, so those are two key areas. Now, if you see here in this example, there are other examples are, uh, you might have uh, specialty chemicals or specialty items, which you don't want them to go from one area to another area, one room to another room. And you can achieve that through passive RFID, installing specific RFID readers. Now, in this example, we have, uh, you basically want to find out where the, uh, where where is your, either it's a raw material or a finished goods are and how they are moving from one place to another through installing the RFID uh, readers at specific location and then reading them the passive RFID installed on your um, material you are flowing. I mean, this gives you enough flexibility uh, because if the passive RFIDs are relatively cheaper nowadays, they are in cents. And if they go along with the product, you don't have to worry about it while the active RFIDs are expensive and uh, used in very specific, high value, critical uh, kind of, uh, and extremely high visibility items. So that's an example of how the material is tracked. Uh, uh, they cannot be mixed and match, which location they are, you want to know when they are taking it out uh, without permission. And also when they go out and gets loaded, you want to get that information. So that's a classic example of RFID into the warehouse. The second one is on the assembly line. This is pretty uh, becoming pretty common. So you basically, you have an assembly line with different assembly locations. What you do is you install an RFID at the beginning. When the, so you are, you are, we have an example is kitchen equipment. Uh, so there is a there is an organization we have worked with. There are the kitchen equipment. They manufacture the kitchen equipment, and uh, their customers are looking for um, looking for live tracking of specific points. So what they do is they put the RFID uh, tag at as soon as the assembly starts. So it goes under the outer chassis, and then as they go through different stages. There are passive readers installed. So you can see here, this is this can be passive reader. And there are antennas installed. And they when they pass through these different phases, they, the, the, the RFID is read on the assembly line. And then that feeds. And there you know, this has passed assembly line. One, two, three, four, five. It's completed and gone to the warehouse area. And then in the warehouse area, basically users use the mobile RFID is uh, before they put in the shipping. So now you have complete tracking from assembly line until the loading into the truck. Of course, you can continue that tracking based upon your supply chain strategy. Uh, if you have um, the proof of delivery or delivery, the last mile is also in your control, then you can track it until it is delivered to the customer. Uh, so that's the another example. Uh, I wanted to discuss about the RFID usage. Now, uh, that's all kind of theory, right? Let's get something exciting into the application. So we have Milin. Milin uh, is going to demo you. Uh, Milin, I'm gonna stop uh, and go ahead and share. Hey, um, uh, oh, I was just gonna mention real quick. Um, I'm just gonna do this quick poll. Um, so let me just excellent. throw this up here. Yep. So uh, please just take a quick minute to fill out this poll. And then we'll get started on the, the demo. 
And just a quick time check, we're at 11.35 Central Standard Time, for those in different time zones. Let's give it a couple more, another minute or two. Thank you to those that are completing the quick poll. Give it another 20 seconds or so, and then we'll close it and move to our quick demo. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll and Nolan. Yes, thank You're you, on, buddy. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Patrick and Shikan for providing me this great opportunity uh, to show the demo. So today I'm going to show a demo. So let me quickly share my screen. Yep, we can see it. Okay, so uh, basically we have a full uh, theory factory of various applications uh, this is uh, supply chain management enterprise access management c approval so uh, we are basically the theory factories and as we can explain we have 50 plus apps uh, working so uh, based on your requirement business requirement we set up our apps and 60 to 70 percent times it matches to your requirement our area of interest is supply chain management with the warehouse management so i'm going to show you how the apps look like so this is a uh, uh, user uh, name and passwords and user log into this okay and here we get all the application we have the printing reprinting put away uh, uh, the beauty of this app is it can take any shapes okay for example if you are using a mobile uh, or if you are using a tablet or uh, if you are using any other device then it can take the shape see this is uh, uh, this is a kind of your mobile we can uh, download the app to your mobile or if you have uh, tablets or if you have ipad then see it can take the shape of ipad so it can mold any shape if you want to change the screen size then here is a screen size we can change it so uh, for the time being uh, for the sake of presentations i will use our FLP uh, device. So this is a printing. Now the major pain area, what uh, the all the warehouse, uh, majority of the warehouse is facing is uh, increase the turnaround time. The user has to go to the warehouse uh, a cabin and then take the printout and then they go to the area of operation and then paste it. So here is a very simplistic approach just go and take the printout so you will get all the good receipts which are pending to print out so what user has to do just click here and just go and print it now the the warehouse may have the different palettes large size or small size or medium size our apps is more with that see we can preview this so this is a, a barcode or the qr code and you can see uh, the QR codes and barcode. If your palette size is very small, so no problems. You can go here, select smalls, and you will get here the small uh, QR codes. Okay. So what user has to do is just go to the GR, the good receipts, and then select whatever the label size he wants and just go and print it. So that's it. The QR label will get printed. We don't have to use a specialized programs or utility programs. Okay. And once it is printed, it will go away. Now go to seconds. If it is a large size, just go and print it. So that's it. 
So this is the printing operation. So automatic printings and it uh, suits the, uh, the uh, intelligent warehouse management. Where exactly your material lies, which beans. Okay, so here is that. You can click here and then you can take the inventory of material by material codes or bin. So if you want to know material lies where, it, if you have the thousands of materials, don't worry, you have to just scan this material. So uh, currently I'm using this, uh, I'm not using the uh, mobile app, so I'm using a desktop, okay? So you have to just scan the labels and enter, that's it. So you will get all the information the materials kept where, which beans, okay? So he has to, so he will get all the information, the PO takes, the GR date, GR numbers. And if you want to see the bin wise material, then uh, he can just scan the bin, okay? He scan the beans and he will get all the information. This bin contains these materials and these SUs and available stock. So, we have all and sundry kind of uh, apps available and based on the business process, we can mold it. Uh, if you want to reprint, suppose the printing is not proper or some problems in the printer, you can have the you know options of reprinting. So you can reprint it. Uh, over and above this printing, we have the put away, then you have the good issue to process orders or the, you know, bin to bin. So I'm just going to quickly show you how the uh, put away is done. So you have the good receipts already happens in your warehouse. So you will get the list of good receipts. What user has to do is use these apps, go to the good receipts and then scan the material. So, okay. So basically this is the QR code. He need to scan this, okay. He will scan the material and then, uh, you want to print the labels, individual labels, or you want to keep everything in the bin, so you have the option. Suppose he say like no, and then if he has to scan the bin, in which bin exactly he wants to put, or the system will suggest the bin based on your business requirement. And uh, when he select the bin, that's it. Everything's, everything is done. What user has to do, just enter the put away and then transfer orders or your material documents will be there. So this way you are uh, printing the put away operation will done. We also have the good issue to order. So if you want to issue the goods with refresh to order, then we have this app. So you can have the reservation or if you do not have the reservation, you can select this order wise, just enter all the details and issues. So it will be issued. So in other words, we have the apps, which is uh, suit to your warehouse. Now physical inventory is one of the pain area whereby user has to take the paper-based inventory. Now by using the Crave app, you don't have to bother about to just click the physical inventories and we'll get all the physical inventory documents pending. User has to just go to the physical inventory documents, enter the bins and just confirm it. So that's it. All the physical inventory will be done at the back end. And then you have the background programs, uh, which will post the document. So this is a quick uh, introduction of uh, our apps. Uh, now the uh, poll is open for question and answer. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Malin. Um, we're all, we've got uh, a minute left here. We do have a question. Uh, so I'll ask that. Uh, what if we want to, here's the question, what if we want to print shipping label automatically from SAP on a label coded with RFID in order to guarantee traceability? Yes, we do have the apps for that shipping label. So uh, if you want to uh, print the label, then we have the apps. Like what I have explained, uh, the printing and reprinting operation, you can go to the printing and then you can print the shipping label. So this is basically the outbound side. So when the outbound delivery is created, uh, then the labels will be automatically gets printed. So we can use our apps, you can print the labels and we can paste it and then that's it. So if you have the handheld device enabled with the barcode, uh, enabled with the RFID, then that will work. That's not a problem. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? We'll uh, keep it open here. I know it's 11.45, uh, but we'll keep it open here for a few more minutes.
And just uh, so everybody knows too, we'll also be sending um, a link for the recorded version of today's webinar. So we'll just leave this open for a few more minutes. And if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. And then, um, of course, um, here's just some contact information for you to um, reach out to us. If you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to contact us via email or uh, feel free to give us a call as well. Just leave it open here for another minute or so. Well, that concludes our webinar for today. I just want to um, thank everyone for joining. And again, um, you'll be receiving uh, a link for the recorded version. Uh, Thanks for your time, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you in the future or uh, maybe even helping you. So thanks again, and have a great day.